It is a joy to have you always in the house of the Lord. Just to get to be together is kind of enjoyable. It's this precious opportunity to worship together since the touch of the Lord in our life. It's so proud to have Donald and his family in our services today. Thank you all for being here and coming in from way out in the north country. <laughs> Good to have Shiloh. She's uh, not, not too El Paso, but that direction for sure. <laughs> Glad to have you in the house of the Lord today. Man, we hadn't seen Brother and Sister Herndon in a while. Man, I would just lit up when I come into the Sunday school class and as there, said, thank God. We're going to make it, and we're making it by the shed blood of Jesus. Look in your Bibles, if you would, to Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 31. Jeremiah chapter 31, if you don't have a Bible, they'll probably have it up on the, wall here in just a minute where you can see it. Jeremiah chapter 31, we're going to start reading in verse number 18. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord. Look at there. Quit snowing just long enough to get it up on the... Deal. Jeremiah 31, verse number 18. I'd like to read down through 21. <clears throat> I have surely heard Ephraim bemoaning himself thus. Thou hast chastened me, and I was chastened as a bullock unaccustomed to the yoke. Turn thou me, and I shall be turned, for thou art the Lord my God. Surely after that I was turned, I repented. And after that I was instructed, I smote up on my thigh. I was ashamed. <clears throat> Yea, even confounded, because I did bear the reproach of my youth. Is Ephraim, my dear son, is he a pleasant child? How many could just close your eyes and raise your hands and say, man, I've been a pleasant child to the Lord. I've got my eyes shut too. <laughs> we want, that's where we want to go, isn't it? <clears throat> since I spake against him, now this is the Lord talking, since I spake against him, I do earnestly remember him still. Therefore, my bowels are troubled for him. I will surely have mercy upon him, saith the Lord. Set thee up the way markers, make thee high heaps, set thine heart toward the highway, even the way which thou winnest. Turn again, O virgin of Israel, turn again to these thy cities. Lord, we thank you for your word. Knowing this was spoken thousands of years ago makes no difference, Lord, because your word is relevant this morning. And you said in the New Testament that everything that was written in the Old Testament is a schoolmaster that brings us and gives us examples and hope and teaches us a way, a way of life that's not there without your touch on our hearts. Thank you for that, Lord. Speak into our lives today. Let us be molded around your truth and your word. And we thank you for that now in the name of Jesus. Amen. I want to speak to you from the thought, I do earnestly remember him still. Some people feel like the Lord just walked away and don't give a rip. But friends, that's the devil talking to you. If you're alive, he cares about you. Yes. We, we feel like we've uh, wore out and, and done so much that God can't help us. But the only reason that he can't help us is because we won't let him. If you submit yourself to the Lord, something happens. Yeah. You can resist the devil then, and a brand new creation is built around your way of life through him. So I want to talk to you just a little bit today about this thought. I do earnestly remember him still. So wherever you are in your walk right now, don't give up on the process of God making a good Christian out of you. 
it's easy for us to say I am but to become one is a lifestyle and it's a life time that we walk out daily a lot of people say I am but to get that done that's that's what that's where the rubber meets the road and so that's where the Lord wants to deal with us at right where we're at this morning why not just pull the mask off and say God I'm not perfect and he says amen and I need help. And he says, Amen. Amen. And I'm going to let you help me. Amen. Amen. And right there, that willingness brings us under the canopy of the mercy and the grace of God. I mean, then from there, you can go anywhere from there if you can get those first three steps fixed. And so he talks about here in verse number 18, I was chastened. If you haven't had a spanking, you're a spoiled brat. And that's why some of you get swelled up when you come to church. You, ne- you didn't have a daddy like mine. Yeah, I love when you shout now. Woo! <laughs> yeah, he could take the swelling out real quick. <laughs> yeah. Don't look off now. Just stay with me. But here's, here's the beautiful part about parents that knows Jesus correcting their children they do it because of why they love them they love love them too much to leave that devil in there (laughs) Carl Ray told on himself and I mean his story is so precious to me but he is just an honorary little chubby mean 12 year old boy and had all kinds of fights in school and everything else and his daddy was dead his mama was trying to raise him and so she got ready to give him a spanking and he just bowed up and he said mama you can't drive the devil out of me and his mama looked him right in the eye and says no but I'm going to discourage that sucker from coming around (laughs) and she went to work on him friends the Lord the Lord can help you if you let him don't bow up against the strap we need it we need chastisement. Yes. Yes. We need. Oh, we'll take all the love and the mercy and the gratitude and the blessings and the gold and the silver and the twenty dollar bills. You have to be in Sunday school, nobody. But what about the chastisement, Lord? When I'm bowed up. Shiloh sent me a little picture. She had a night latch on her horse. (laughs) She said, I put it on and used it this morning. (laughs) You know what happened? When she stepped up, that bronc blowed up. That's, no. (laughs) Do we need help? Yes. Every day. And what gets us in trouble is we think we're fixed now. (laughs) Okay. So here's the Lord. He said, I I remember you. (laughs) I know what's in there, and I know how to fix you. Woo! Isn't that wonderful? I watched a kid. I mean, anybody's ever done one of those Rubik's? Rubik's cubes? (laughs) Oh, look, I bet you didn't take one that's messed up and just fix it about just just like that. I have never even got one on one side straightened up. But I watched that kid. I don't remember who it was. I mean, he got that thing and it looked like he was going nuts with it. And then he puts it down. I mean, there it is. It's fixed. If, if a child can learn that, you think the Lord don't know how to unmix all of our problems? He can just speak to the problem we have and he can help us. But it takes hide off. So here he is in verse number 18. Thank you, Brother Herdon. I got one leg there. <laughs> he says here, about midway down, I was, thou hast chastised me. What does that mean? That means, oh. <laughs> and I was chastised. Wow. And he talks about here, as a bullock unaccustomed to the yoke. We, we don't work very many cows to like, like yoke like they used to years ago. But here is an example that you would probably understand. If, if you catch a cow 
or a horse or even a dog with a rope and they've never been caught before, something happens when that loop starts tightening up. If they've never had one on them, they don't just trot up there to you and go, <laughs> when that rope tightens up on their neck, it's like, you're in for a battle. And I mean, they'll fight you till you choke them down. And so look what he's saying here. When you first caught me, Lord, I was like a bullock that's never had a yoke on his neck. And that's why when they ask you to come to the altar, you run to the back end. Woo! So, what? Ah, what's the matter? With? We're bucking and snorting, trying to get out of the church, and the Lord said, You're going the wrong direction. <laughs> what is it? Yeah. Do, do they just, you just, you, you ever caught a dog with a rope or a puppy? You know, he's never had a collar on. You put a little collar on him, what does he do? Man, he scratches his head, flips over, drags around. You're, you're trying to break him to lead, and he's trying to break you to get him get away from him. <laughs> he wants to go. And so that's not an uncommon thing for us to, to have understanding of that. So Lord, let us to know that he's doing it because he loves us. He's chastening us because he loves us. In Psalms 118, in verse number 18, And the Lord hath given me knowledge of it. <clears throat> uh, no, this is Jeremiah 11. Okay, 118, 118 and verse number 18 of Psalms. There you go. The Lord hath chastened me. Look at this word. Sore. <laughs> but he hath not given me over unto death. He hadn't killed me yet. <laughs> he just, he just helped me. When me and Randy, I've told this before, but I, I can't get by it. When me and Randy was kids, uh, we plowed in the same field together. And he had a, a four-row uh, two-bar on the back of his tractor and a four-row cultivator on the front. Well, we farmed two and four. And so it would, leave, it would leave a blank in the middle about that wide. So he would go down one, one row of cotton, plow the cotton and turn around and come back down the other one. Then I would come in behind him and, and plow the blank out because I was little. I was just a little guy. Anyway, we'd been plowing and uh, was doing pretty good. And all of a sudden he pulled out I pulled out and I'm coming down the turn road to pull in on my road to plow and he just pulled out in front of me and stopped me. And he told me, you back up. And I told him, I said, I was on the turn road first and I'm not going to back up. He said, I've got a four row cultivator on the front of this tractor and I didn't care what he had on it. And he said, I got a tool bar on the back and I am not backing up. So he puts his tractor in gear and pulls up against my tractor tire to tire and I put mine in one that's low and I let the clutch out and we went to get together like two bull mooses well his tractor was so much heavier than mine he pushed me back past my row and then he tried to back up and get on his and well, I just run into him you ain't gonna get that done come on now we done that two or three times. We were over on the side of a hill. What we didn't know that about a eighth of a mile over there, halfway down through the field, was my dad leaning on his hoe, watching us. You can't imagine. Randy's back is to him, but when I saw that, I I could back up then. I backed up. You can have all of it you want. <laughs> I got water running out of my radiator. Come on now. <laughs> winning, winning for us is an incredible thing. We want to win so bad we're willing to be destructive in the process. We need chastisement. We need the Lord bringing correction on us. And you can't believe how long we plowed before we went to, it was about 2 o'clock. We usually come in at 12. <laughs> and when we turned coming up the road toward our house it was a cliche road then there was somebody standing out there close to the mailbox <clears throat> where you turn in oh. 
Did he hate us? Oh, no. We actually made a living with those tractors and that equipment. They weren't for us to have a fight with. And that was the last time we run the tractors together. <laughs> now, friends, if you live for God, you've got to learn something. You can't just keep going bullheaded like unaccustomed to being caught. We've got to have a bend in us. There's got to be a tenderness. You can't just get to your spot and say, I did this right here and I ain't going no further. Why not today just say, Lord, take me where you want me to be. I don't want to act like I'm unaccustomed to you getting a hold of me. I want you to get a hold of me. I want you to lead. You, you take a pony that's broke. Uh, I've got one little horse. I'd go out there to catch him about four o'clock in the morning. And he'd be laying down and he'd sit, down, he'd sit down on his rump and get up on his front legs. He's sitting there. I'd put the halter on him and I'd say, come on. He says, okay, here we go. If he'd been standing up, when you come in the pen, he'll come to you. That's the only one I got that'll do that. But isn't that a good story? The rest of them, you got to go, oh. <laughs> They know where they're going to have to go. Well, what about bending a little bit and saying, Lord, I want to stay. What about just this? Let's just put it in real easy. I want to stay in a pliable condition. That, Lord, if you nudge me, I can, I can, I can feel you. I can feel you bending me. Instead of having to be choked down, I mean, until our problem is so over our head and then we'll finally pray through. I thought somebody would be running the aisle by now. Yeah. <clears throat> me and Randy run like crazy. <laughs> Woo! Well, even if you've done something crazy, there's still hope. And here is the blessed hope. In Hebrews chapter 12 and verse number 10, look what the writer says here. Before you get there, the latter part of this verse in chapter, uh, chapter 118 of Psalms says, The Lord has chastened me sore, but he hath not given me over to death. We didn't die over the tractor problem. <laughs> we, come on now. And you think, well, if I go follow the Lord, I'm going to lose everything. Whatever you lose will just be what would take you to hell. Be thankful the Lord cared enough to knock the junk off of you and rise up and say, Lord, I'm going to follow Jesus, whatever it takes. Woo! So Hebrews 12 and 10 really gives us a beautiful picture of the Lord working on us. For they verily, he's talking about when our, like my dad spanked us. For they verily for a few days chastened us after their own pleasure. When they thought it was needful, you probably wouldn't have spanked your children for running the tractors together. <laughs> yeah, I see some dad saying, yes. <laughs> They verily for a few days chased us after our own pleasure, but he does it. Why does the Lord get a hold of us? Look at this word. Who knows about the words profit and loss? Is it going to destroy you for the Lord to correct you? Is it going to destroy me for him to correct No, it's going to make me better if I'll just stand it. Look what he says. But he for our profit that we might be what? partakers of his holiness. I loved Hope's testimony this morning. After she got saved, every once in a while she'd get mad and cuss. Does that belong to the believer? No. Is that a Christian way? No. And guess what she said? I had to get over that. Yeah. Why? Because we want to be partakers of not what we used to be. We're asking the Lord to make us the new creature. We want to be part of his holiness. And the the scum has got to be cleaned off for us to become holy. Yeah. Wow. And that's what sin is. He helps us get that out of our system. Woo! And so is chastening all that bad? We, we need chastening. Look at verse number 11. <clears throat> the Lord loves us. Verse number 11. Now, no chastening for the present seemeth joyous. We could have plowed two days without eating lunch. <laughs> But the thought it was, this is going to be life changing. <laughs> well, it says here, but grievous. But notice these words, nevertheless, afterward, it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. What's better than running your tractors together, just get off and uh, 
take care of each other's problem, get back on your tractor and go on your way. But don't tear the equipment up in the process. <laughs> yeah, and the Lord gives us a way to go around our trouble. Woo! So he chases us for what? By love. In verse number six of the same chapter, very precious passage. For whom he loveth, he chasteneth and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. There's this cleansing element. And, and what uh, Addie done such a great job on our, on our Sunday school lesson. But what he's dealing with is our will. We're stubborn and he's, he's got to get us to move our will over to say not my will but his will. That's, that's the character of Christianity on a daily basis basis. And so we've looked at, I was chasing as a bullock on a custom. Secondly, out of this passage, when you think about the Lord remembering us, did you know, my dad never again told us don't run the tractors together. He didn't have to tell us. We learned something. Yeah. That's, that's where we want to go. Instead of going back to where we come from, like the hog to the wallowing in the mire, Lord, let's take the next step. I want to go higher with you. And so here, here in, in, in verse number 18, look what the writer says. <clears throat> the, the latter part of this is, turn thou where? Turn yeah. Turn thou me and I shall be turned for thou art the Lord my God. The chastisement brings Ephraim to the place that he wants to repent. And I can remember when dad would spank us and my, my dad would mean he was so precious. He didn't, it wasn't an everyday deal. But when we, when we needed uh, correction, he, he understood that part of life. What we always wanted to do though, whenever we got through was was uh, we still love you daddy he said I love y'all too <laughs> that was and that's we're done that we knew that everything there was it was gone it was behind us he wants to bring us to that place where we say Lord that that hurt me but I needed it and now it's behind and I can go forward Woo! I shall I shall be turned he says for thou art the Lord my God so repentance what brings hope for us after the chastisement to get to where God wants us to be is repentance is the road back to God so anytime there's a troubled area don't just swell up and leave the Lord Come back and say, Lord, I'm just going to repent of it, get it out of my system, say I'm sorry and mean it, and never go back to it. There's a word, look at this word in Proverbs chapter 28, verse number 13, that gives us such clearance on what real repentance is all about. He that covers his sins shall not prosper. That's like saying, I didn't do it, he did it. There was no, we didn't have to worry about nothing. Dad was standing right there watching us. There's nothing you can say, but... We won't do it no more. <laughs> he that comes to sin shall not prosper, but whoso, look at these words, whoso what? Confesseth and, here it is, and forsaketh them. That means that you'll never do that again. You leave that behind in your life. You forsake them, he shall have mercy. So here's the Lord said, I, I remember you. And he's asking us when we get chastened to come and let the Lord deal with us. We repent, we get away from that, we leave it behind and it's no more. If you know anything about Luke 15, it's where the prodigal son comes home. You can almost see right here. He's went through his distress signals. He's down. He's in the hog pen. But something clicked in here. The Lord said he came to himself. Could we look at ourselves like through the eyes of God and see us for what we really are? That's what keeps us humble. You remember the song that says, without him I could do nothing? Without him I would surely fail? That, that's where we are without Christ. But if he's walking with us and we're walking with him and listening to him, we, we become a foe that the devil cannot overcome. So repentance is the road back to God. In, in verse number 19 of our text, thank you, John, for helping us with these scriptures. Jeremiah 31, verse number 19. Surely after that I was turned, look at this word. The Lord got a hold of me and I did what? I repented. And after that, I was instructed. Not only do I want, I want to repent, but I want to say, what do I need to do next time? <laughs> I smoked my thigh. Okay, get your hands out. <laughs> wow. 
<laughs> what did he do that for? He said, hey, self, wake up. You know that the Lord's talking to you and know he loves you. That's what the whole deal is about. He loved us so much. He don't want us to drive off the embankment. He said, use your brakes. Woo! Stop before you go, go crazy. Yeah, I smoked my thigh and I was ashamed even, yeah, even confounded because I did bear the reproach of my youth. So what's he doing with this sin or this loss or this trouble? He's leaving it behind. I'm getting away from it. You know, something you're ashamed of, you don't want to go back and revisit that over and over. You want, you're thankful you're free from it. You've got by that. That's where the Lord is trying to take us in our daily walk is, Lord, help me to get that out of my business. I don't want that back in there no more. It sounds like Paul's conversion in Acts chapter 9 he, he's such a rough man. He kills, he's there when they kill Stephen. He's leading the group against him. In chapter 9, it says he's yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter. I mean, this guy is so hooked on, on religion and so lost from Christ. He is a Pharisee of the Pharisees, but he's a lost Pharisee. And when Jesus strikes him down on the road to Damascus, all of a sudden, his spiritual eyes are open. He's, he's actually blinded physically when he sees Christ. But his spiritual mind is opened up and his heart is opened up. And he says these words, what do you want me to do? Where do you want me to go? Wow. That, that's where Ephraim is in this passage of scripture in Jeremiah. He said, the Lord got a hold of me. And when he did, I was ashamed of what I've been doing. I repented. And then it's like, I, I need direction now. You remember what the... the in Luke chapter 15, what the prodigal son did? Does he stay in the hog pen? No. 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 The Bible says he got out of that hog pen and he got to thinking, I can never be a son no more. I didn't throw that away, but I could go back and be a servant. Wow. You know what the Lord's looking for in the kingdom? People that'll serve him. Servanthood. Servanthood is a great thing. Man, it's wonderful. So we want to be there, Lord. Use me wherever you can use me. Wow. And, <clears throat> And then the third thing I want you to look at for, with me in just a few moments. This is in Jeremiah chapter 18 and verse number 20. <clears throat> when you think about this word, I do earnestly remember him still. The Lord has not forgot you even if you go backwards. He, he wants to coach us until we can get past ourselves. Yeah. So the, the thought I get out of this verse here in verse number 20 Is he for my dear son, is he a pleasant child? For since I spake against him, I do earnestly remember him still. Therefore, my bowels are trouble for him. I will surely have mercy upon him, saith the Lord. So is the Lord doing Ephraim like this? No. no. He's doing like this. He said, come on, let's work this thing out. Let's fix it and we can go forward from here. Woo! And so to know that the arms of the Lord are stretched out still is a precious thing. He wants to help us. In Romans chapter 10 and verse number 21. <clears throat> that baby's talking in that precious language. <laughs> Stay in there, cowboy. <laughs> But to Israel he saith, look at these words. How often is the Lord looking into your life? All day long, 24-7, the Lord's trying to make contact. You got your phone off? I'm not talking about physically. I want to know if you got your spiritual phone off. Are you letting the Lord talk to you? Oh, we talk to this stuff all the time, but what about letting the Lord in on some conversation? Yeah. But to Israel he says, all day long I have what done what? I stretch forth my hands unto a what kind of people? Disobedient, gainsaying people. But he still said, come on. And friends, he's willing, he's willing to die for one, for one person, let alone for the whole world. He loves people. He loves you. He loves me. And so this constant time of him helping us uh, Stay right where we're supposed to be is that he chases us for a reason. He brings us into that, that preciousness of his love. And Luke chapter 15 and verse number 20, the prodigal, he gets in the side. He comes over the hill. He's, uh, his clothes are torn. He smells like the hog pen. My dad had an old sow when I was a kid. I was probably, I don't know, six, five or six. 
she had about 12 pigs, piglets, and one of them was a runt. <clears throat> and I would watch them whenever she would lay down where they could nurse, wherever that little runt was, they knocked him off. And so I became the runt's advocate. <clears throat> there was enough for everybody. So you stay on your bottle and let him have his. And so I would sit there until that little runt filled up. And whenever I would come out of the hog pen into the house, mom would say, you smelled, <laughs> you smelled his like the hog pen. I said, I've been saving that runt, mama. <laughs> and that runt made a pretty good pig after a while. <laughs> You know, the Lord, he's, he's out there. He don't mind dealing with everybody else, but if you've got a spiritual runt problem, he'll let you grow up if you'll just stay in there. Come on, don't give up. Get your book out, learn Jesus, fight the good fight of faith and know he's doing you like this. I'm gonna see that you get your bottle. Hang in there. Don't give up. Trust the Lord. Why? He says, I do earnestly remember you. Yeah, you've had trouble. You've, you broke my heart. I'm, I look at me, I know. I know I broke the Lord's heart. I'm, I mean, I'm ashamed for what I did. But I'm so thankful to be born again. Woo! I wasn't quite as bad as Brother Leatherwood. <laughs> no, sin is sin, isn't it? Yeah, my sin would have took me to hell. That's, that's where I was headed. But Jesus came and found me. Woo! I'll shout for you. Hallelujah! <laughs> yes! And so here in Luke chapter 15, something happens. This uh, dis disheveled, dirty, broke, no $20 bills, John. He got nothing left. He's got nothing. He comes over the hill and his dad sat out on the porch. And he looks up there and sees that lonely figure coming down the road. And look at the scripture. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, how far is that? How far can you see? Would you recognize your own child? I think you would. And if you can't, Jesus can. This is a, this is a symbol of God watching us come home. And his interest, Jesus tells these stories, these three parables, showing us how much God cares about people. And so here comes the prodigal, he's, and he tells his dad, I, I, I'm not worthy of nothing, but look, look what he does. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed that dirty hog. <laughs> yeah, he loved him. He put his arms around him. Woo! And that boy, he breaks down. His repentance is real. They said, I, I can never be your son, Dad. I done blowed the inheritance and everything. I mean, I, I done horrible. Just let me be a servant. And his dad, he starts hollering, bring some shoes. <laughs> bring a ring and put on his finger. Bring the best robe. Kill the fatted calf. Woo! And he screams out from the bottom of his heart, my son was lost and is found. My son was dead and he's alive. And they begin to do something. They begin to make merry. Woo! Prince Jesus wants you to stay in the pen so bad. But he won't lock the gate. If you stay with Jesus, it's got to be your will. He wants you to love him like he loves you. He wants me to love him like he loves me. And so his arms are stretched out in verse 24. So precious, we'll read it as <clears throat> same, yeah. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost in his family. They, <laughs> woo! They began to make merry. And then in closing in Ezekiel chapter 37 verse number 16 and 17. <clears throat> this is prophetic of Ephraim and Judah. This is, years, this is years down the road. This is Proverbs 37 
and verse number 16. Discarded Israel has been out there a long time away from God. Yeah, it is Ezekiel. Did I say Ezra? I'm sorry. It's Ezekiel 37. Thank you for correcting me. First mistake in the last three seconds, probably. 37, 16. <clears throat> this chapter is about all the bones coming together, the early part of it. The leg bone coming to the foot bone, the knee bone coming. Yeah, all those, all those bones come back together. They made a song about it. It's beautiful. And he's talking about uh, Israel that has been decimated coming back. And in 1948, that actually happened. They become a nation again. But this here is talking about in the end of time, something's going to happen to those discarded. You remember the lost, the lost tribes of Israel, those ten that were just scattered all over the known world? Look, look at the promise here that's made. Here in verse number 37 in chapter 16, it says, Moreover, thou son of man, take thee one stick and ride upon it for Judah and for the children of Israel, his companions. Then take another stick and ride upon it for Joseph, the stick of... Ephraim. The stick of who? Ephraim. The stick of Ephraim. What's he saying? Ephraim, I do earnestly remember you. You've been a rascal. You've been in trouble. You've had all kinds of difficulty, but I'm bringing you back. Woo! Moreover, thou son of man, take that one stick and, and write Judah on one and then get you another stick and write who? Ephraim. For all the house of Israel and his companions. Then look at verse 17. And join them one to another into one stick and they shall become one in my hand. And friends, what happens when you get right with God? You're joined into the family of God Almighty. And where you've been separated and off to the side, now you're bonded together. And what does that is the love of Jesus Christ. I do earnestly remember him still. He has not forgot us. And yes, we do need chastening sometime. We need to repent pretty regular. But know this, the Lord's not pushing you back. He's bringing you in and he wants to love on you and make a difference in your life. Would you stand together with me? Maybe you're here today and you recognize that there's some stuff in your life that if you let the Lord have his way, that it would take a spanking. <laughs> when we step over the line there's got to be something that brings us to a place where we say Lord I'd, I'd like to repent of some stuff <clears throat> and without being facetious why, why take anything home with you that you can be free from right here today Amen. and you can go home and say Lord you got a hold of my heart you touch me now you're talking to me, you love me. And by an uplifted hand, I'm coming this morning. His hand's already going up. I'm coming this morning. I'm believing God all over this building. What are, we, what are we saying? Lord, I'm coming. I know you love me. I know that I need you to get a hold of me. And I'm repenting ahead of time because I'm looking for those arms to come out and gather around me. Father, we just ask you today, would you touch these lives? So many hands raised this morning. We need you. We don't want to run, Lord. We want to come to you just like the prodigal son did. And we want to know on the inside of us, Lord, that we've made things right with you. We cleared the books one more time today. Lord, as we come around these altars, speak into our hearts in a very powerful way. And for this, we thank you in the name of Jesus. These altars are open. Would you come and talk to the Lord and watch the Lord meet you here and speak into your life?